what is going on guys it is your boy Cecil here with a video here today bringing you guys a really cool like I believe if you are looking for any sort of tips or hints or tricks and and I don't know like if like I can't if I'm just trying to think about it this way let's just say if I had this video while I was trying to learn mascot designs it would probably make it 10 million times easier I'm not just saying that because it's my video I'm just being completely honest and I think you guys are really gonna like these little tips um because they're pretty extensive in a way of uh, explaining and such, but I swear it's not useless information. It's almost like a lesson. I promise that, okay? So I hope you guys do enjoy today's video here today. Don't forget to leave a like on the video. And uh, yeah, I actually got all the examples off of my Discord. So if you guys want to check out my Discord, Discord is down below in the description down below. Um, down below in the description down below. But yeah, thank you guys so much for watching. And uh, I'll talk to you guys next time. Alright guys, so this first tip here is definitely going to help you guys really understand the world of mascot design and that is making sure you have a defined line work. You have a defined suggested molding of your actual uh, your mascot design here. So what I wanted to kind of use this example of this person actually tweeted out at me. His name was Clicken. He went ahead and said requesting assistance. How should I add highlights to this mascot logo in the making? So originally the first thing I told him to do is switch his colors. And the reason why I told him to do that immediately, right, is to really kind of give you guys an understanding of how mascots are really formed formulated because some of you guys skip the steps of the learning and just go straight into shapes and it's just not exactly how it goes. So if you were to go ahead and Google any kind of mascot logo designs in Google images, what you're going to find is a certain color that you can definitely see that's usually the darkest color in the actual mascot. Um, majority, right? Uh, you'll definitely see that it's the darkest color in the actual mascot design is these lines that very much so mold around the eyes, the nose, the, the facial structures or whatever the shape that's going with it, whether it's a line, whether it's a, you know, a Spartan helmet like we have going on right now. Um, you're always going to see that it's a darker color molding and definitely casting and really kind of you know keeping everything inside really like where it's not kind of like, you know no shape no color excuse me is going to like really escape that shape so it's going to be housed by a nice dark color nice surrounding color and what's going on wrong with this here is that he's using a red primarily for his kind of um his line work in a sense right but he he right now in his head doesn't have line work he does not have that mentality going into this so he's going to be lost immediately and that's what I kind of feel like, right? So if I were to tell you guys immediately is I would switch these colors. So what I have over here is a more finished product of what I would go for for this mascot logo here. Very, very simple stuff that I did personally over here. Just really try to keep it unique and definitely try to keep exactly what he had going on here. Like little, like really quick things that I did was these little uh, little scratch marks here. Um, you know, I added an eye in here, but that was, of course, probably would add that later on. I definitely also added um, some very simple shadows there. And then I kind of switched off the nose. I made it more straight and got rid of all these weird little, you know, quirky little uh, curves that are going on here, right? All these suggested curves are kind of pointless in a way, right? And also I went ahead and kind of rounded this off right here. Now, what I would definitely want to see right here is this example here that I have here is the exact sort of, uh, uh, I guess, you know, what he would probably have realistically inside Illustrator is he basically has a red surrounding this black here. Now, what's going on wrong is immediately, like I said, he's got to switch the colors up. So if I were to switch these colors up immediately, let's go to add that blue on the outside and add this uh, very, very high saturated red on the inside, you're gonna automatically see something a little more differently. Hopefully you guys really understand what I mean by this is seeing it a little bit more differently right now is that this black right now, or this black blue kind of uh, darker color here, this darker outline color is surrounding and very much so housing the actual logo right now what i have right here is what i would think he has suggested right here he definitely has two different shapes he's working with shapes and not lines and line work so if i were to just kind of give you guys a little hint of what i mean right now um, before i quickly do that i'm going to definitely change up the background color um he definitely has a bluish tone to it i would let you guys know that red and blue do a color theory quick color theory class whether it's in uh, high school or on youtube or anything like that really understand colors a little better um red and blue just do not go together and that does not disappear here when it comes to the world of logo designs um, when it comes to at least line work and such right so I went with a more he could have went with a more darker color that really didn't show too much blue right or however um, either way you have to change this red as well but I went with a more uh, kind of surrounding reddish color since I wanted to make sure I kept it um, 
kind of in the family, right? I want to keep it in the family of having that red color scheme because I don't want to go away from what the main console, what I would believe it would be, which would be red and black, right, in a sense, Um, because I really wouldn't usually use a red as a helmet color because that just doesn't make any sense to me, but hey, that's okay. However, right, what I said that before is I would change the helmet color as well. I'm going to change that to a nice, more of a, a lower saturated color. Just that way I want to add highlights and shadows. You can definitely make sure you can kind of define those, right? This is a very, very high saturated color. If yours is up here, you know, like this is pretty saturated. I went with more of something like around here, right? It's a little, it's a little bit further down. It's also a little bit different, I think, on the hue scale, but it's just a little more darker. It kind of really kind of fix itself and kind of really understand itself. Now, what I was saying before is he has, he was working with shapes. He was working with a, a mascot, like this was his mascot logo right here. This is his mascot logo. To him, this was his mascot logo, and that's definitely not what it should be. What should happen here is if I were to cut this out, this is how he should have started. Correct, right. Like this is this this right here, what's going on here is line work. This is what's gonna basically be, like I said, casting and molding the actual mascot design and really helping you guys understand that this is what this right here should be before any kind of color. You should have this, your sketch should look something like this, right? Something that can really help you guys understand where it's the suggested lines are gonna be, um, whether there's gonna be like like I said, like little scratches and whatnot. These little scratches here, I, I can add them right now. Let's just do these little random little scratches right there, right? There's gonna be a scratch right there in his helmet. There can be one like over here as well. That's a weird thing, but you know, I'm gonna, I'll be a little bit aggressive with it. I'll just do a, a very big one right here. I'm, I'll keep it like that, it's whatever, but let's just do one right here as well, right? I can do like that right there. I can do another one like just straight up like over here like I had before my little example, right? That's a little bit too, you definitely wanna do all these little little things that you're gonna be doing yourself. If you don't have minuscule detail around the, uh, the entire mascot design going out continuously, be sure that your lines that you're doing, all these little accents and stuff like that are very much so not exaggerated, but definitely demanding its own space because if you don't, it's just gonna look like a mistake. If I were to have this little small little scratch here, like it's it doesn't look quite great and I have this very skinny, it, it just not it just looks like a mistake right so you want to make sure you kind of demand its own space and definitely say that this is where this damn like little scratch here is gonna be okay so after that I'm gonna add these little little extended little uh, little marks here because I want to definitely show like this little extended line like these little little things right here will definitely kind of help just kind of uh, like I guess you would say like suggest um, I don't know like how would you say suggest continuous lines right so I'm gonna kind of try to point this up to around here Right, so if your eyes will kind of follow this and be like, okay, I'm gonna go up here. It's gonna really formulate that actual helmet that's going on here. I can be a little more thicker on this side as well, but you know, kind of like really trying to understand it. Like now this should be what your line of work should be. This is what this guy is missing over here. He's missing the fact that he's not should be, he should not be working with shapes. He should be working with like just a, a, a sketch really or a, a line work a, a, a progression a molding i'm trying to figure out the right correct word but i think molding is a pretty correct word so once he has this going on here for himself he can then go ahead and add some color into it the way you would do it you make a layer right below your line work which should be looking like this and he should just go ahead and i'm gonna go ahead and just hide that for a second so i don't have to get you know it's in my way and whatnot let's go ahead and go all the way around this and since we have line work, it's a lot more easier to color things and not make any mistakes and kind of uh, uh, filling in space and whatnot, right? Um, so now I have this here. We'll use a nice red right there. And now we're kind of having this little mascot design come together, right? So I can just add now shadows. The way I would do that is make another separate layer. Make sure it's below the line work. So that way you don't have to perfectly follow any sort of, um, you don't have to follow these lines exactly, right? You don't have to do that. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to go ahead go around this here, I'll just, you know, go around this, uh, I'm going around the red in a sense, right? Because I stopped at this point here as well for the red. So I'm going go around this little helmet, the inner helmet shape color, this red, I'm going to connect that right there. And what I can do is I can go ahead and just change this to a nice uh, darker color. And I didn't actually get the color from the artboard. So I'm going to just quickly kind of figure what that should look like. And that should look something like this. So let's go ahead and make a, a little, little swash here, right? Take this drag this up in there right and we'll just bring this back in now so now what I can do is I can take this little shade that I created that's gonna be like a shadow make that this color and what's gonna happen here is you don't have to worry about ever kind of messing anything up all the lines will be very very much clean because your line work is hiding all of your extra lines all of your extra shape lines and it's way way easier for you guys to really understand and kind of get things going that's a shape you know kind of like a highlight there or a shadow there you can have a shadow up here now Right, let's just do this one up there, like make that right here. 
and you don't have to worry anything about it because you can just go all the way around, connect it, and everything else is hidden. It's very, very much so the correct way of kind of uh, doing a mascot design. So if I want to go ahead and make another new layer, let's make it above the actual, um, uh, the line work line. That way when I make this eye here, it'll be visible above everything, just like so. Nice little white eye. Um, just like this, just like so, right? It looks a little bit awkward, but you know, it's just trying to get the point across really. Uh, like that a little bit, I guess. And very much so you can definitely see that this is more, looks more like a complete mascot design. It's very, you know, kind of loose and sort of, uh, in a sense, very simplistic in a way, right? However, it's just how I come, I'm just going off of what this person was giving me. And I also saw that he went with a little arena thing here. The way to actually correctly do this is really much use your line work and kind of find a shield color to go with. So if I want to show you guys with this right here, this is the actual, um, little text part here, right? So I have the actual text in there and I have this little shape right here that's gonna kind of be like the shielding of this text right here, right? So what I went ahead and did was originally is all you have to do is kind of find out, uh, let's do arena, right? Let's type in what the name of your organization is or your eSport, whatever it is, right? Go to warp, go to, you can select a whole bunch of different styles. My favorite one is happens to be bulge. Take it to the negative bend and get this really cool negative bend so that way you kind of know to yourself like hey you know when you find out where the middle is it should be somewhere around here but i would definitely advise you guys to use you know uh rulers and such but you can definitely see you can make a nice little shield like this right this is definitely not ideal but i'm just kind of going for it for a little uh, example here i'm going to flip it vertically so i'm just going to split it half and half and do something like this you know, combine it together. Let's take this layer, throw it below the text layer. Let's make the text layer white. Uh, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and just rasterize it. Excuse me, not gonna rasterize it. Click on this object, expand it. There we go. Now we can make it white. Click on this, make it the actual line work color. And then you would take this, um, all this, right? And you would then um, most definitely just put it wherever you kind of want to have it and it's going to look really, really cool and good, right? So hopefully you guys kind of understand that part as well. Realistically, I was just trying to, I really wanted to get you guys the understanding of really defining your line work and really just understanding that part of it because that really much so all matters. And when you kind of figure that out, you're going to really find yourself excelling in the world of mascot designs because it's, it's really all about just a lot of things clicking along the way of through experience. But if you're doing the same exact thing over and over again, doesn't matter what kind of different concept, if you're doing the same exact steps over and over again, you're definitely not going to find that groove that you definitely want. So that would be my first, uh, I guess, extended tip. Um, of definitely kind of figuring out what line work should be and what coloring could should like kind of like uh, go with right whether you're casting of your colors what it comes to the actual shape of whatever shape you're working with in this case a very cool Spartan helmet now I'm gonna go ahead and do my second little step here hopefully it's not as long but I really want it's it's something it's just important I just like talking and I feel like it, I hope you guys are listening and so that's all so I'm gonna go ahead and move on to the next step and hopefully you guys enjoy all right, guys, so your second tip is actually pretty cool. I actually was able to get the original sort of AI file this person worked in, and I can tell you guys, a lot of you guys are probably finding yourselves in guy, like this guy's shoes when it comes to mascot designs. You might look at this and be like, this is my mascot logo, right? And it's definitely, most definitely missing the most important part of a mascot logo, and it's 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 his housing, right? So what I'm looking at right now is kind of like a turtle without a shell, right? You're kind of looking at this design, um, very, very awkward colors here, I would definitely say, suggest in the first place, but it's missing any sort sort of housing it's just very blank right now i wouldn't really call this a mascot logo i would call this an animal icon or something like a 2d concept or a 2d logo concept it's definitely not in the mascot logo family however being that said this would not be too hard at all to really suggest that it's an actual mascot logo so what i'm going to go ahead and do is you guys kind of show you guys what you would kind of do in a step step-by-step -step process if your design sort of looks like this where it's like a cool owl a cool wolf a cool bear that might look something around this you still definitely have a very very good start to a mascot logo now what i'm going to do is i'm going to very simply just pen tool out this exact kind of housing that he has here um but i'm going to simplify it, uh simplify it <laughs> simplify it a little bit more um you can definitely see a lot of these little things here see how all this kind of stuff is going on here when i showed you guys previously in the step one all this stuff wouldn't happen to you guys like all these little hidden things here like if i were to unlock all of these you can see that this line even continues over here there's his highlight is now his actual main body it's a very very confusing and that is why you have to definitely clean it up and understand so i'm gonna do is i'm gonna simply just take all this stuff here 
pen tool it and uh, give it my own original housing. And that way I'm gonna go ahead and kind of figure out then to put a line work in there. I'm gonna suggest all that cool stuff, show you guys all this is steps, um, all this is steps. Why am I like adding syllables to my words? Anyway, I'm gonna show you guys right now. I'm gonna go ahead and just quickly do it and speed art it for you guys. Okay, I have to definitely, I just, I just, I'm looking at all this guys, like I see this so, so, so much. And I'm gonna just quickly show you guys, when it comes to doing these little, like little fur, kind of little like, almost like little shard kind of things going on, like these little pointed things here. And you see how clean mine are, see how awkward these are kind of going on right now? It's because he doesn't really understand what he's doing just yet. However, but this is very, very easy. All you have to do is, well, I already did my first one here. For my second one here, I'm gonna say I'm gonna do a round where this one is. I'm gonna skip this one because I'm gonna simplify it. I'm just gonna go ahead and click drag. I'm gonna go ahead and just take this little extended point here, right? I'm gonna hold control. This way I can just move it freely, just like so. And I'm gonna drag this little point here more towards the middle of my line. So right here is about the middle. I'm gonna drag this out a little bit more, right? So it's still in the middle of this line, really, but just kind of like dragged out, like I said, more to the left. And then I'm gonna go ahead and just click on this shape here, or excuse me, click on this actual anchor point, just like so. If I click on it with my pen tool, as you can see, it'll get rid of any other extended point going on here, right? Because I don't want it to curve. If I didn't do that, right, if I were to click over here, it would curve, right? You see how this is actually extending all the way over here, but if I were to click on the actual anchor point, click again, that goes away. So then I click on that to reset my anchor point and kind of show that that is where the standpoint is now. Click, drag again, take this here, try to put this in the middle, drag it toward the left and that's all you're really doing in a rinse and repeat kind of way because it, it as you can see it gets a little bit awkward for this guy kind of goes a straight line here straight line here he's not actually giving another curve so just kind of remember um very simply kind of a uh, new line click all to drag right let's just say where the middle is left hopefully that kind of gives you guys a little bit of a better example All right, guys, so I went ahead and kind of finished off with the molding here. I went ahead and just kind of simplified the ear a little bit more. Like I said, I, got, I gave it less of these little, you know, kind of like furry spikes because all you really need is like three suggested ones and every kind of, your eyes kind of like say, okay, I get it. It's, it's definitely fur, right? And I uh, went ahead and just kind of, and now I'm gonna really quickly kind of suggest what I'm gonna be doing next for the next step. Right now I have the housing, right? So if I were to fill this in, I would kind of have what this guy would say that his is, is his pretty much his mask logo, right? Um, without like all the awkward little highlight colors and whatnot he went for. But right here is the kind of just the body in a sense, but we need to currently make an actual outline of this now. So I'm gonna go ahead and do again, is I'm gonna go ahead and make another new layer and essentially kind of give it again its own sort of, um, I would say it's like a little housing again. So we're just gonna house it one more time. I'm gonna go ahead and just do it one more time. What you can do with this right here though, is um and this is a sense if you kind of are just doing it in the sense of this guy's style there's a lot of ways to do a mascot logo there's no correct correct step-by-step -step process but there is a correct method in a sense of what you should be focusing on rather than what you you're probably doing right so right now we're just kind of creating our own um line work right now but right now i'm just kind of creating another casting right going around this and what you can do for this right here is you can do like a lot more things. You can really skip this. So I'm gonna skip this and I'm not gonna add, I'm not gonna perfectly, you know what I mean? Like cut it out like this, but I'm gonna go ahead and just move this further down a little bit more, probably bring this out a little bit more, right? And I'm gonna go ahead and kind of, you know, give it that cool little spike right there, right? And I'll go ahead and go in again, just like so. I'm just gonna do that once again, just really quickly. And uh, you'll see what happens next. All right, guys, so I went ahead and finished the second molding here. So if I were to go ahead now and kind of take this little second molding that I did, I'm just gonna quick little fix there. Um, Take this right here, I'm gonna make this another color. I'll make this a separate color so you can see the difference. Right, I'm gonna make sure this is below this. And what you're gonna be seeing here is basically two 
um, very simple shapes, right? This is what we kind of went and went on the same exact trip when we went on the first little example here, where we made two separate shapes. Now what I can do now is I'm just gonna go ahead and highlight this now. So we have two separate shapes. You can kind of see what I'm doing right now is it's a, it's almost like an outline right now. So I'm gonna go ahead and just highlight these two shapes just by taking my direct section tool, highlighting right over it. And I'm gonna go ahead and press Shift M on my keyboard, which is the ship, uh, Shape Builder tool, excuse me. And I'm gonna take this, hold Alt, when you can see on your mouse right here, an Alt and a plus button, what you're basically seeing here is something that's gonna basically add or, or uh, in a sense, kind of create its own shape, right? Or if you press minus or hold Alt while this little minus little um, little mouse, mouse cursor is on now, you can press hold Alt, click. Once you click, it'll go ahead and just delete whatever's going on over there. Now I'm gonna go ahead and just get rid of this and we're gonna make this a little bit bigger now. It's kind of, uh, you know, just, <laughs> it'll be a little bigger. Um, so now what we have here is some actual line work, basically, right? So I'm gonna go ahead and just make this a darker color. Let's go ahead and make this a nice little darker blue here, just like so, all right? Then we got that line work color in. Now I'm gonna go ahead and bring this up again for myself, and I'm gonna go ahead and just make this a little bit more bigger. Now before I, I should have kind of like, uh, you know, measured it a little bit better for myself, but I'll say like around about here is where it's kind of going on here. So he wants his, high to, uh, his eye to be here, his nose to be here. Now let me show you the really, really cool thing about line work, right? So you see how he has this really, really huge highlight going on here. That's kind of really not working for him very much. And what I can do is besides adding a highlight here, let's mess around with the line work for a second here and go ahead and just kind of like make almost like a, a, a really cool, like a fur kind of suggest that's right here right? Kind of bring it inside the actual logo, right? So if I get rid of this, you can start to see, I just brung this. Oh, I got to fix this though. I brought this little, like kind of like, uh, uh, I still followed the little fur kind of suggestion with these little shard kind of things here going on. These little pointed little, uh, you know, lines going on here. However, if I didn't have it here, I'm, I'm feeling space, right? It's very empty right now. You're going to say to yourself, it's so empty. Frick it, I'm just going to add some highlights and shadows to it. Um, even despite the fact that he has his highlights shadows of very awkward colors, even if they weren't awkward colors, it still wouldn't work quite well, right? So I'm just going to go ahead and suggest some little things like I did with this little line here. That's his little, like, little, I'm just going to say that's his body of his fur and whatnot, because it's still, you know, this little outline right here is still his body itself. However, what's going on on the inside is more suggested lines and a lot more. This is kind of where the whole customization comes in, right? So I'm going to go ahead and see over here. He has his nose right here. I'm going to take my line work once again, make it, and I'm going to say, hey, his nose is now just going to be a, a, a just a little suggested nose right here, right? Just like this. Um, boom. I'm going to get a little bit bigger. Right, so now if I hide this again, his nose is now suggested right there. You can definitely see that this little shape right here that's hiding it, um, we're not really hiding it, but kind of like almost covering it, is just a nice little suggested nose for his um, nose here. But in a sense as well, he has a little eye spot right here. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and make yet again another new layer, take my pen tool, and we're gonna go ahead and give it the, the eye a little bit of a housing. Now I'm not too great at this when it comes to what's going on with this guy's concept, but Let's just say something like right there. I just kind of gave it a housing. So if I were to go ahead and delete this again, you'll see that it kind of looks like I created a little bit of a housing for the eye. So what would happen here is once he's done with this, let's just say that's pretty okay. Um, I don't know if it's too great, but hopefully you guys kind of get the example here. I'm just gonna try to do it. I'm just trying to do it like I'm literally doing off the top of my head in the sense. So that's more like um, I guess raw in a sense, but really kind of making sure I illustrate it in the best way possible, the quickest way possible. That way you kind of well pick it up in the best way possible as well, right? Just like that, a little bit of a housing of his eye here. So what's gonna happen here is now you have an eye suggestion, you have like cool uh, cool negative space sort of filling in all that weird, you know, space that's going on there. If you wanted to, you can go ahead and make an, another one. I would do it another one, why not? And let's take our pen tool here and let's go ahead and like try to, you know, suggest a nice continuous line. Remember I did in the first step here, let's do a nice suggested continuous line going right here for the ear. Really, really showing that the ear is basically raised here that little nice little suggested line right there um if i wanted to i can kind of make it a little more wider right um oop. Uh, let's just do this 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 and this right let me get a little more wider and whatnot and uh, what i would do now is kind of fill it all in you know what i would do is i would make a new layer take all these layers right here throw them inside this layer right there go ahead and make a new layer make a new layer just like so right and what would go behind this would be the actual color that you want to have for your uh what is this? Like a wolf, right? Yeah, like it's definitely a wolf, right? So I'm gonna take this, kind of like do something like so, right? Kind of go around this, because it's basically gonna be, all these little pencils I'm doing, is just it's just hiding. It's gonna hide right behind this. So when I do, go ahead and make a nice little color here. Let's just choose like a, I don't know, like an orange or something like that, right? Um, I don't know, it's more like a fox when I do an orange, but let's just do like a gray 
for now, right? So you can see that it's looking way, way more like a mascot rather than just something like this, right? This right here is just not quite there yet. But in a sense, he still has like that little shadow going on there, right? You still have that shadow going on right across here. What I would do is I would just go ahead and just kind of fill that in the way, the same way he kind of did it, right? But now with all this extra line work and all these extra suggested kind of things, you definitely have a better look to it, right? Let's just do something like right there. I think that'll look pretty good. Let's just go for it. Um, Can you please let me click on this, this, this. What's going on there? That's awkward. I'm just gonna, I'm gonna purposely miss that because I don't know why it's not letting me click right there. Um, but let's just go ahead and go around now, right? So I'm gonna go around. Um, it was something I would definitely fix later on, but I'm gonna make a nice little darker color here for the nice little shadow there. And there's this little shadow right there, right? And his eye would definitely just go, probably go right in here. Let's just do a nice little cool eye, right? Just like so. Um, boom, let's just make it white for now because it doesn't really quite so matter. I definitely put it above the line works. This has to be so. And there we go, right? A little eye right there. It's I know it's very, very awkward in the sense of not really trying to design it. I'm just trying to show you guys where everything could be. Now, like I said, this is looking way, way, way more like an actual mascot logo. I'm just gonna add one more thing, which kind of be like a, a kind of like a highlight, almost like his belly, like under his tummy and stuff like that. Like a nice little highlight right there. It's almost like a snow wolf or whatever. Um, I don't know. So you can kind of see like right there, right? So if I just take this, move this over for a second. And this is what I had previously. This is the same exact, essentially this is the same exact actual design as this right here, right? But this is more of a fulfilled mascot logo with the correct steps in order to actually create a mascot logo, which is basically line work, adding your color, adding your shadows, adding your little extended little, uh, you know, all this little extended stuff here. If I were to get rid of this, it would be very, very empty, right? If I put that back in there, it doesn't look so empty anymore. If I were to go ahead and move this, you know, your eye is no longer floating. It's more or less having an actual housing, right? So hopefully you guys understand the actual step two and kind of like the purpose of really creating, I guess, the line work in a sense, right? Um, yeah, I think that's, I think that's it. I'm just going to go ahead and go move on to the last step, which is more or less something to keep away from rather than really learning too much. Because I feel like there's so much information in this video, it's kind of overwhelming and it might just be something you have to revisit a couple times. Who knows? Hopefully, I know for sure if you watch this video correctly right now, you're definitely going to excel on mascot designs like tenfold. I promise that much. All right, guys, so for the last tip in today's video is something for more people who might be already invested in mascot designs, but didn't really get any direction or creative like thought process beforehand. This guy's mascot's not terrible. Like I can see it's some kind of sort of like soldier or some kind of helmet, kind of like, uh, what is it called? What do you call those people? Like Viking kind of creature going on here? Creature, but cause I don't, I don't really, go he said there's like suggested teeth going on down here. I can't personally see it in my head. That's because he definitely overdid it and did not simplify enough. And I would say for sure, you would have to revisit that. If I was a client, I wouldn't be too happy cause it's not too noticeable what it is, right? However, before all of that stuff, you guys should really like automatically know from the previous steps is that his liner color is is definitely not dark enough it should be way darker and you would definitely can like you could definitely tell that that is definitely what's going on here he has a red for his outline color that is just totally not what's going on here it should not be a very very high saturated color that's so close to all of his other colorings that are right here now the main problem about this is i luckily fortunately got the actual ai file that he chose but look whew, how many layers are in here it's kind of insane how many layers are going on here for only essentially what should be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen layers at most, by the way. That's not that's not that's that's excluding the line work. I'm talking about the shapes that are inside here. Now, um the reasoning being is probably because he went with a like a Lego kind of thing going on. If I were to start removing these shapes here, the, the first couple are not terrible, right? They're like Shapes that are like, I'm okay, I get it, I understand that you might have not understand the whole concept of line work and stuff, but I mean, when I move this, okay, I move this, okay, I move that, I move this, you know, I move this, I move this, um, and then I, I can forever, legitimately forever feel like I'm moving, alright, I'm not clicking in the middle, but I can literally, <laughs> like, I can legitimately, oh my god, I can move this so many like why is this a thing for this guy i have no clue i'm not trying to cut your ass or anything like that but i'm being i'm being totally serious in the sense of that is not this 
is a colossal like mess up like that is something that you should not ever need to do this is what i mean by really getting the process down if you had your sketch and if you had whatever was going on that's supposed to be going on here um it almost looks like like i don't even know like a collage book like a what do you call it? like a speeder or whatever but he should have had an understanding of what he should be doing before anything. So essentially what I would have to personally do is I would pencil all this stuff out right here. That's what I'm gonna quickly do for yourselves um, or for myself right now to kind of get that better understanding going on here. And also right here, all the, whatever this is right here in this little section here, um, you know, you know, separated between this and this, like this should just not even be a thing. Like whatever's going on here, I don't know if this will be his neck, but it just doesn't even make any sense. So in his random little shapes here with all these different colors, it just doesn't make too much sense. I would tell you guys immediately if you have some kind of like weird extension going on here that you can't personally figure out, get rid of it. Really just get rid of it or come up with revisions that it looks way better. Otherwise, get rid of it. All right, guys, so I went ahead and just definitely just really quickly pen tooled around what exactly you kind of had going on. <laughs> like, I was honest, I'm not going to lie to you. I was a little confused of what's going on here. Um, I don't know what exactly, like, I'm not going to tell you guys that I'm trying to do a, a better revision. Sometimes I'm just really just trying to show you guys the way he should have done it because maybe the concept just really isn't just that strong, right? But I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to fill this in with any color right now because it really matter too much. I'm going to hide that layer for a second here and then show you guys why exactly why this wouldn't work. What he has going on here, like I said before, was all these shapes. If I were to zoom in again, you can start to see, like if I, I click on this yellow shape here as well, you can start to see that there's two different shapes that are kind of, you know, colliding with each other. So essentially his shadow is now his main concept, then his yellow is his main concept shape. And then over here, you got a little mistakes here. All these little mistakes, clients and all that kind of stuff, you should definitely not be charging just yet. You're definitely not at the level of understanding of, you know, charging for mascot designs, you know? So this right here is just definitely not something you want to do. You definitely want to, you definitely want to understand like all the stuff right here, this random little pink thing. I don't even know what that is. Um, like all this stuff should not be happening because in the sense is if I were to go ahead and try to move this yellow shape, let's just say like I want to move this yellow shape. What I would have to do now is then try to perfectly kind of mask this like so, or I have to use a shape builder tool over and over and over again to kind of cut this out right there. But then you're going to find out that, you know, there's an empty spot over here. So you have to come over here. Um, then you have to move this over here so that this goes over the yellow over there. Then you can then click on this, then use the shape of this be like, oh crap, it's messed up again. You see how can like just tedious that is and how hard that really is to keep up with. That's because you did not do it right. Okay. So that that's not because mascots are hard or anything like that. I'm not saying they're easy either. I'm just saying the understanding it is not that hard. Um, what I'm going to tell you guys now is what I would do, make a new layer. I remember I have that layer right here still. <clears throat> Put that above there for a second. I'm gonna go ahead and just take this little horn that he has here, pencil it out myself just like so, right? And I'm gonna go ahead and go up just like this and kind of copy what he had going over here, which is a little bit of an indention right here. And I'm gonna go ahead and just do that one more time for this other one right there. Uh, boom. It should be like right there. I'm gonna move it up just a little bit more. And move this just a little bit like that. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to hide this, bring this back up, and show all these shapes for a second. Now, the reason why I selected all these shapes with the direct selection tool right there is I just highlight them all, right? Take Shift M. That's the shape builder tool. Take the Alt. Boom, boom, just like so, right? Now, if I were to have this as a line work color, which should be a nice darker color, right? I'm just going to move any darker color whatsoever right now. Um, if I were to go ahead and just say to myself, I'm going to make this yellow, right? Remember what we did before for a second. I'm going to make this yellow because it doesn't really matter for me right now. Right, this is our color here. Now let's say if I want to do a highlight or a, a, a shadow color, I'm gonna make this shadow really quickly. I'm kind of like doing what I what I saw before in his other one right here. Right, if I just hide this for a second, you can see what I mean. Right, a shadow and like a, a color here. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and just uh, where is it? There it is. Let's go ahead and just make this orange for now, or you know something like this. Right. So now if I wanted to go ahead now and move his horn around, let's just say I don't like his horn. I'm gonna move it like this a little bit. I'm gonna move it like this a little bit. I'm gonna move this like up or I'm gonna make this super long and whatnot. 
um, rather than doing what I did before, remember the shape builder tool method, which is basically what we would have to do to personally kind of make sure it's perfect. All I got to do now is take this, move this out of the way, um, just like so, boom, and then it's fixed again. So do you see what it eliminates any stress in that matter? So really this video is pretty much like all about like line work, but that's because the mascot design is nothing. It is legitimately nothing without its line work. Um, but that is pretty much my little last kind of tip there. It's really to kind of understand it, really understand, get a plan down before you go ahead and try to execute something you don't even know what you're going to be doing just yet. So right here, this is what you definitely don't want. You don't, you don't want to be able to endlessly take a shape and continuously move it. You definitely do not want to be that guy. Okay. You definitely do not want to be this guy here. Okay. Make sure you limit it to as, as low as many layers as you want. So the next thing I would do if I wanted these little horns here, right? What I would do is I would do his little helmet piece there. I would do his little like, uh, what you would call it, like thing right here, right? I would do his little thing right here. And then I would just definitely then color it in. Make sure you just kind of figure it out. It should not be like Legos. It should be like, is there anything more simple than Legos? I don't know. It, just, it should be just very, um, very point to point. You should be able to label everything, right? You definitely cannot label everything in this, um, without having a complete anxiety attack. Okay. So hopefully you guys enjoy my video here today. I hope it was also very entertaining. Also in the sense of very informational for the people who really want to learn mascot designs. I love my channel to death. And I love the fact that a lot of you guys understand that I'm really trying to create something that's really going to help you rather than something that's going to, you really just want to kind of just do. Okay. So I love that direction. I love the direction I'm going in with the channel and I hope you guys really, really do so as well i know the video was probably so long and i apologize so very much for because since i guys don't i don't know how to stop talking sometimes but this this example here i feel like this video here even though i was talking so much i really do feel like it was valuable information if you find it to be something more invaluable then you're just not listening i promise you that and uh hope you guys enjoyed today's video here today i'll talk to you guys later don't forget to follow me on twitter at i know i didn't have any camera or anything like that by the way it was just because i wanted to simply have you understand and look exactly at what i was looking at so uh yeah hopefully you guys follow me on twitter at switch you follow me or uh, i guess you would say subscribe to me if you haven't already of course comment anything you want to see me do down below in, uh, in the uh, comment section down below and uh check out my self i selfie.com slash seso hq for any premiums and packs those three dollars and as always guys have a freaking fantabulous weekend and i'll talk to you guys later seso hq out peace i just said fantabulous holy shit <laughs>